and uh, Matt, do you have the script? I have the script if you don't. I do, uh, but timing, actually timing's not great for me. Give me one second. Okay. Uh, so welcome everyone. This is a meeting of the Amherst Cultural Council. And um, at this time, my name's Angela Mills. I work for the town manager. We are recording this meeting. It will go up on the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. It will be linked to the Cultural Council webpage on the Town of Amherst website, which is amherstma.gov. I'd like to recognize our wonderful co-chairs, Julianne and Matt, and have the co-chairs take over at this point. Thank you, Angela. Have a lovely evening. You too. Thanks. Okay, so pursuant to the chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting uh, may do so by um, the link on the town website. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, uh, we will post the session on the town website as an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive uh, re record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. So let me correct myself that uh, members of the public are um, able to access the meeting by the Zoom link um, where they would be able to enter this meeting with us. Um, thank you all. I always bungle that, Matt. I'm sorry. I'm just, it's just not my thing. Oh. <laughs> I think that it's, go ahead, Cody. I have a question. I have a work meeting at six, but will we still be at core or? Yes, I think so. We have, um, seven of us here so appreciate you being able to join us to start yes eleanor or all right i just want to make a similar thing i think i have to head out at 6 20 okay um, to make something by 6 30 but hopefully okay still be fine. and what about you sylvia are you heading out for the same thing yeah i do have to, or something different but i need to head out at 6 30 but i don't know if we would have a quorum then um so I can be late to that thing if need no, be. No, we're not asking you to. Okay, well, then we have our, our work to do to see just how many of these we can, can go through. Cody, did you have another question? No. Okay, thank you. So we need to do our audio test. Um, so, Cody, we heard you. You heard us. Can you just say hey? Hey. Thank you. Uh, Matt, audio test for you. Here. Okay. Sylvie. Hello. Eleanor. Hi. Christy. Hello. Hello. And Rachel. I'm here. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you all. Um, unless somebody has something else urgent, <laughs> I suggest we get right back to the deliberation. Yes, Eleanor. One quick thing, just so I can take notes before I leave. Um, was there an agenda shared for today or is it in the folder maybe that was sent? So, so Eleanor, for the, um, for the deliberation meetings, all you need for the notes is just to say ongoing deliberations with the date okay. and the attendance. So what we actually do is we do one single document typically and in that document, you know, you do the the date and the attendance and then just say like ongoing deliberation of grants. So we just know who is there when. And okay. We, and we, yeah. Ongoing document, you mean for like every single deliberations meeting? Yeah, that's usually what we just wind up posting. And if Angela needs to separate it out, she can. But th that's right. the easiest way, just because th these meetings, we don't contain every last little nuance of the discussion. Sure. Should I create one or should I just go into the folder? And you could probably just go off the one that you started last week. Okay. Cool, we'll do. And I will remove all of the, the, the nuanced, more nuanced notes. Sounds Yeah, good. that's good practice for future meetings, but, but not for these. Sure thing. Thanks. Okay. Rachel, are you ready? Okay. The one urgent thing that I have, um, and I've had some things come up over this last week, is that I still have not gotten back to everybody about a potential date other than the 14th, where we really want to find... Um, a date for the voting meeting when everybody can potentially attend. Now, Christy, I think you're out of the country maybe before then, right? I'm, I I'm tra traveling, was I'm it in back. December? 
I'm back. Um, I just Tuesday nights I can't do, but I am back. I am back. I've okay. And then, so you're potentially available later than the than December fourteenth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. And, I mean, and, I'm. Yeah, and this all has to be done before January first, right? Uh, even before that, because we okay. really need to get any denials out roughly, um, you know, by around the 21st ish, uh, because they have an appeal process. So we sometime kind of between like the 14th and I mean, as, as soon as possible after that, we need to get done. At the same time, we have several college students. So I'm aware that that's right at the end of your semester. So um, does anyone know when you're fully done with exams at uh, UMass and, and Amherst College? I mean, I could look that up, but I haven't. I think for us, it's mm -hmm. the 21st for Amherst College. Great. So we are going to have to do this right in the middle of your your stuff there. Mm-hmm. Um, December 15th is when everything's done at UMass? Yeah. Okay. Eleanor and Sylvie, could, could you send me some some sort of availability for that, you know, sometime in between? I don't know. Let me look at a calendar real quick. Um, any, any time from the 11th through, let's call it like the, the 18th of December of you know, something that might work for you. And and you too, Cody, please. Yeah, I, I can know. I can look at that. Uh, yeah, yeah, something between, yeah, the 11th and the 18th, and then we'll try to sh shoehorn something in there, okay? Thank you all. And yeah. likewise, anybody else, if you, you know, have conflicts or whatever, want to let me know the 11th to the 18th. Um, yeah. I don't have finals, so I'm pretty open and just heading out of the state for winter break. Got it. Okay. All right. So if everyone could email me, then I can get consolidate all that and get a concept and come back and, and try to check um, with you guys for, um, or put a doodle or poll around up around that. Great. Thank you all. Sorry to take time for that. Okay. So um, you want me to time? Uh, I'm just going to just give me just a second here. Our, the last one that we properly kind of got through was um, well, we got through the Arcadia players and um, I felt like we we ran out of time, I guess, on George Baker and his two events, uh, other than I guess we said that we were going to go back to him. So I think there was nothing more to discuss on that. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Rachel, because we will start with um, Carol Baldwin, who is offering Quilting 101 at the Jones Library. Uh, right now, the date is just 2024 she is has a $200 budget and she's asking uh the cultural council for 200 um so it's a quilting program for folks that are interested in how qu quilts are made but also the history of quilting in the US and it's an opportunity for people to uh try doing a uh, kind of a small example piece of quilt work that they can take home with them and uh Julianne, can you, what number are we on? Sorry, because I couldn't be here on Tuesday. Could you tell me where we are? Yeah, so this is number um, 15 in the in the sequence, right? Can you find it? Sorry, if you're, if you're giving me a thumbs up, I can't see. No. <laughs> Of what's the name? What's the name of the project? It's Quilting One Hundred and One. Okay, you I'll got find it? It? No, no, but I will. I will. I'll find it. 
Yeah, it's in in the order. It you know the 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 on the Excel chart, it the sequence number. It's number fifteen. And in the book, I don't have the page number because we didn't do this. All right. So we're running out of time here on this one. Um, is there anyone who champions this and wants to fully fund it or anyone who has any issues with it? Yes. I uh, would like to fully fund it. I think it's a great project. We've funded her in the past and had nothing but good outcomes that I'm aware of. So I am full support of it. Uh, I, in general, would like to fully fund it but I am concerned with no no date. And I don't think I saw a letter of support from the Jones. It's good that you recall that um, she's she's done stuff for us before and it went well. I'm just double checking that though, because I'm not seeing it last year actually. What are you checking? Uh, that, she, <laughs> that I'm remembering correctly. <laughs> I remember the application from the past, but I don't remember what we had decided on it um yeah she was great before she she did a lot of accessibility work she had uh, um anyway okay um so i think is there anyone who does not want to fully fund this uh provided that we could satisfy that it will happen and that the jones supports it Okay, can we move on? All right, uh, the next one is, um, Cynthia Barrett is applying for reading and singing for Emma and Belly, Sister Detectives, a bilingual book. Um, there's no date for this, this would be at the Jones Library. And um, we've had applic uh, prior applications here and um, so I'm going to just summarize because there's probably a bit of discussion here. So this is a family that's written um, a bilingual book in Mandarin and English, and the children have written it, and I, I believe it was self-published. And now that it is published, they would like to do an event at the Jones um, and as, as the authors of the book with the, the, the kids dressed in uh, detective outfits. And then they're going to read both in English and in Chinese. And then after this is all done, they would have um, a, a craft session to make an Asian craft, maybe origami or do calligraphy or something like that with the students who attend. And they might have some giveaway items like magnifying glasses and stickers or mustaches along the detective theme. Uh, and um, is there anyone who would like to champion this or has any concerns? I'll, I'll go ahead that I'd like to champion this one and that it's for $100. It is an actual cultural event that is in two languages. Um, with, I guess, it being cool is in Chinese because, you know, English. But... Um, in in the past, you know, we we certainly are not um, when we've deliberated before. We weren't in the position of thinking that you know we necessarily are there to, to fund people who just who want to self publish a book. But I think that um, this is something that's happening in Amherst, kids in Amherst, and it's multicultural and um, you know supporting young authors. Yes, Cody. Um, we still hold dates. Um, I almost wonder if the Jones Library is trying to see what events will happen so. They can give out dates, so I'd be mindful that it may be not the oldest fault that there's no date. 
Oh, I, I, so you're saying that in some cases it's hard for the, the Jones to give them a date because they don't know if they're going to get the funding. So we've got a chicken and an egg thing. I mean, I it's we do need dates for events, but as far as this goes, you know, I think it is exactly the kind of thing that the Jones would bring in and they've made it this far with the book. So I'm really actually really pleased that we could could can do something to endorse that it has been a great project all along and now it meets our criteria. So, and it's just a hundred dollars. Is there anyone who would not support fully funding it? I really appreciate you saying that because we, you know, in the, the past actually two years, I believe that they come in, you know, yeah. with the night with a book in progress, and it's kind of like we couldn't support it. And I, I agree with you. I think now they've got it done, and they want to do something for kids, and it's you know, it's a small grant. I support it. I also share Cody's concern. In addition, the Jones may not be um, super available, you know, next mm. next year. But you know, there will be. There's the Munson. There's the North. The North Amherst Library. Jones will have an alternate location. So, you know, I. I yeah. If yeah. it wasn't a hundred bucks, I would say that maybe ask them to go talk to the Jones about an alternate venue. But I think, you know, yeah. they've shown good faith here. I, I, I'm so yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm right there with you. Yeah, and you know, it's still on everyone who's getting a direct regret direct grant to complete the event and to amend and modify and all of that with us as, as they go along, if they need to make changes. So, and again, at a hundred dollars, you know, it's, I, I think we're in a, in good shape to uh, support them with this. Okay. Any other comments? Great. Okay. Um, the next event is uh, the gathering and this is Kia and Key and Company Community Hip Hop Workshop. Um, and Shakia Barron is the applicant. They are asking for $2,000 of their $2,550 uh, budget. And um, this is a company of dancers led by the key who's Shakira Barron. Um, and they're going to produce a free community workshop to focus on sharing dance form of hip hop through interactive education and performances and create a greater sense of community. Um, the workshops consist of 80 minute movement experience in an outdoor location uh, and it's open designed for participants of all ages. And they get led through the dance movements while receiving cultural and historic context about the origins of hip hop dance. Um, and there'll be some exciting performances and it will conclude with a chance for participants to perform alongside the company members, um, showcasing what they've learned. Um, and uh, just a wonderful celebration of culture through music and dance. And um, it, the location for this is Scroft Park and it is scheduled, I guess at some point um, in August, 2024. Uh, I don't recall if there were specific specific dates um, for this. So um, um, I didn't see one either. But. Okay. No, there's no date. Is there anyone who'd like to champion this? I guess we all share the concerns that they're about the date. I would support a push. Mm -hmm. um, when I looked at it, um, one of the things is that Amherst Recreation is a potential sponsor. So that gives me more confidence in it. If we had lots of money, I think it's exactly the kind of thing that we should fully fund. Um, given that the the stipend amounts are very low when when you get into the the details of this grant application, uh, so it's supporting a lot of artists and there's a lot of public benefit. Um, it is also a big ask for us at at the moment, but it's all right here in in Amherst. And I think with Am Amherst Rec um, potentially behind it, I mean, if they were fully behind it, um, I don't know that we'll have all of the funds for it, but I think it's a great project. Oh yeah, I really like the audience physical involvement. Um, mm -hmm. I like that it's like an exercise thing too. I think that's cool as for us as a council to be supporting. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay. All right. So we would fully fund it if we could. Um, I, I love everything about it. It's just, and I, hopefully this is just early grant, a weird pattern, but really this, this should have a letter of support from, you, you know, when you're calling in partners like that, it, mm -hmm. it really is, is, it isn't too much more work to just ask them to give a letter. Um, and, you know, we've kind of, we've kind of set a precedent in, that we, you know, we have some discretion if we want, you know, like I, I would say if we're considering making, if we have funds available to give them a large award, and I agree, I love the proposal and everything about it, but if we have funds available to, to even fully fund it or close to it, I think we may want to actually consider asking them to go and get, to get some of those partnerships in place. So I'm just putting that out there as a thought. Yeah, I agree. Decide right now. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's that's true for anything that's that's getting to be a sizable amount of money. Period. Yeah, that they have to satisfy the criteria. Everybody really has to, but you know. Okay. Any other comments? You there, Rachel? We haven't run over on anything yet. No, we have a uh, just over thirty seconds on this okay. one. Okay, let's keep going then. So okay. then we have the. I'm going to say this wrong. So I'm just going to use the abbreviation, the BDFS projects, um, which is at the field station. It's uh, the application is Christy Fasecker, and they are asking for uh, 5,500 of their $5,500 budget. Um, and this is an arts and science project um, that uh, is set to be to begin in 2024 and end in 2027. Um, so I, I'm going to just jump ahead on this one and say that I don't believe that we can fully that we can fund this one at at all. Um, is there anyone who wanted to champion it before I raise my concerns? No. Okay. So the fact that it runs from 2024 to 2027 and any of our grants projects must be completed by December 31st of 2024 um, means it, it does not meet our criteria. Um, and at the same time, it, it, it doesn't even have a location. So it's a, it's a really big ask. It's about, you know, 10% of our, of our budget. And it strikes me also as being um, more of a, a concept um, and not really a concrete project or or event. Uh, so I I'll open it up for any other comments. I I would say this doesn't meet our criteria. Yes, Matt. Well, we could still collect a final report on activities done over a year. So I'm not sure that I'm ready to rule it out. I certainly wouldn't feel comfortable giving them a denial letter on, you know, saying that th for that reason. Um, so I think that's, that's a concern and something we could factor in if we did decide to fund it. I just, I just Googled this because this, this word document is not very um, eye opening. Like it's not clear that it's the real thing, but mm -hmm. if you, if you Google the Burde field station, they have a very robust website with portfolios and links and all kinds of things that they've been doing. So it's a case where, can I share my screen? Yeah, you're a co-host, you should be able to do that. You know, I, I, I wish people would sort of yeah. take the initiative to give us a link, but the truth is, you know, um, there there is quite a bit of content on here and it, so anyway, I mean, I, I'm not saying that I'm championing it by any stretch. I'm just saying that it does appear to be a legit, a legitimate thing. And yeah, it, maybe it, it, yeah it is. I, I I can see that it's legitimate. And I, I, I am a little stuck in this, you know, that, that I'm happy to be stuck in it, that we bring public benefit year to year and we fund things year to year. And it's difficult to fund something when the public won't benefit until we don't know when precisely or exactly. Sylvie, I'm stumbling on my words. You go. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't feel like strongly about championing it, but I do think that it has kind of an element that other applications have not had yet. And also they did specifically talk about programming for neurodivergent students, which I do think is important. Could they be like encouraged to, I don't know, narrow in on something specific, like a project or an event or something that like, it just seems more like they didn't know what our guidelines were totally. Well, frankly, looking at the website and seeing how sophisticated it it is, it's, it's a little frustrating to me that you know, the grant wasn't a tighter grant because I would assume that there are certainly folks there that have that skill set and perhaps it got passed to, to someone there who, you know, doesn't do this. Yes, Cody. I just have to jump off. Oh, thank you. Yeah, of course. Thanks so much. Bye. Any other comments? There's certain people here I'd really like to. <laughs> what are other folks thinking? Time's up. All right, that one we'll have to come back to. Thank you all. I can get a lot more thought. That's good for that one. The next uh, grant is a feature film by um, Gabriel Bernini. Um, it is, has a date uh, of being no November 1st. So it happened, I guess, yesterday uh, in Amherst. And they're asking for uh, $2,000 of their $2,000 budget. Um, so in this case, uh, they've received some grants already for past film projects. Um, and uh, their last grant funded a, a his film thesis at Hampshire College, and he's had a lot of growth as a in his creative career, and uh, because of these grants that and he has been living in Los Angeles, and he recently moved back, um, and he's shooting his debut feature, and he's raised some funds for the project. Um, it's doing some crowdfunding, and there's some private investment in grant writing, uh, and he's trying to get his crew flown out for this fall shoot and the cast includes um a few different actors um and comedians from a group called simple town at uh blood barn film and is there anyone who'd like to champion this one or who has concerns i don't think he can come to us with the film so undeveloped. I don't, I mean, a PG-13 thriller, what does that mean? I, you know, I, I don't know enough about the, I don't feel like there's enough about what the project is. Yeah, there's, I'm concerned that there's no location, although apparently, unless he meant November, 2024, otherwise it happened yesterday. Um, so I don't know how the public well, can access it from the Yeah, so I'll speak I'll speak because I just I clicked on the the link that he put in the thing, right? You know, I, yeah. I just took a second to Google just real quick. Blood Barn film. So they're in a fundraising phase for this. I, I think this is actually an interesting question that we haven't wrestled with before, which is, you know, they they have to raise they have to raise they don't have to raise all of their funds to start shooting. So I mean there's you know, there's an interesting they're in an interesting place right here. And it's where direct granting makes it a little bit more, you know, there's a little bit more at stake for us to just turn over the cash. Um, you, you know, so they've raised, they have a $35,000 goal, but they've already raised 5,000, 4,800 of it, according to the website that I'm looking at. And the web website isn't fully developed. You know, there's not a lot of information there, but that's what, you know, that's how movies are is, you know, their early concept going around and trying to raise funds. I think the challenge for me would be to fund something that it feels almost impossible, you know, highly unlikely that we'll see a finished product, 
you know, going back to your your concern of the last one, Julianne, mm-hmm. it, won't, it certainly won't be finished in a year. And and I think that's, you know, that's OK if that's built into the proposal, you know, um, they can they can certainly send us documentation that they spent the money well and that would be OK. Um, so, just, I mean, just what you're saying, their documentation that they spent the money well, but how how do I tie the, that money spent to actual public benefit? In, in this case, you know, if they're raising funds you know, and and there's no actual thing happening or any way to deliver this. So I don't think we're in a position to be able to give funds that aren't directly tied to local public benefit. Well, what's what do they give for, for a release date to actually play it? Uh, so I'm in here right now. They They said that the... Uh, event date is uh, November first, twenty twenty three. I know, I saw that in Amherst without a location. And they don't give any other sort of target release date anywhere. No. No. Um. And he's talking about he'll invite the actors and crew that they've met in L.A. and New York to their hometown to create this. He also said that he's trying to get the funds to fly them here. That's not in the budget, but we certainly can't support um, flying folks here. Um, So the budget is for production sound mixer and camera and light rentals, but um, I I see nothing about what would actually happen with this locally um, on a specific day or place. Time's up. Okay. Did are we? Is there anybody who thinks this meets our criteria? I'm not ready to rule it out. I'll put it that way. I think it's something we should come back to. I'm not. I'm not ready to support it. That's for sure. But, um, but I think we should think about it. Okay. All right. I know we just have a few more minutes left. So the next one is, <clears throat> um an application from the Black Business Association of Amherst area, and it's still We Rise Black Celebration Series. It will occur uh, this year, starting December 26th and into the um, New Year's Day in Amherst. They are asking for $10,500 of their $10,500 budget. Um, This uh, series is uh, for, for Kwanzaa and also Black uh, History Month forums on art and culture in February 2024, and also for the June, Juneteenth at the park. Um, and it's an initiative of the Black Business Association of Amherst area to bring together leaders from the community who have been organizing these traditions at a grassroots level for the town of Amherst for decades. And they hope to establish these traditions to ensure enjoyment, upliftment, education, and community building for many years and decades to come. Um, so it is a large ask. It is all happening here in Amherst. And uh, I'm sorry for the for the dates. Yeah, it's actually um, three dates. The, the, the December event for Kwanzaa, the Black History Month event for February, and then the Juneteenth event um, that's upcoming June. Is there anyone who would like to champion this event, this uh, grant? Anyone who has concerns they want to share? Well, we've we have run into these quite a bit where you know folks have energy towards events, but there's a, and there's a lot of TBDs. You know, what artists? You know, at what rate? The budget is is kind of sort of speculative at this point. That being said, you know, I think. Um, that is sometimes how event planning goes. So I don't want to rule it out out of hand because I realize that, you know, there are there are artists and musicians out there who can be found. Uh, he, I mean, I, I guess there's there's some precedent for, you know, an event organizer like Juneteenth. We've done Juneteenth in the past, getting funds from us and then distributing it as they, you know, as, as they see fit to some degree. I, but, you know, obviously 
we would want to see more details in terms of how, you know, who's the money going to and, and how much and, you know, what rate. Yes, yeah, structurally, I feel like we're stepping into something that's kind of a monster of our own creation in that, you know, we are saying an organization can only apply once a year and they have to combine everything into one application. So what we have here is three events and so, many of these are multi-day events. And if if we'd had, you know, roughly a $3,000 request, you know, for each of them, you know, in that neighborhood and taking each one separately, it would be a different way of thinking about it. The big disconnect for, for me here is with these events, I don't know that they're, since it's collaborative, I'm not quite sure who's owning it and and um, really ensuring that the event happens because these funds to me seem like they're additional support for a larger event, but not entirely discrete events in and of themselves. Is anyone else getting that kind of thing that they're, which is, I mean, we want collaboration, that's great, but who's actually responsible? Is this group fully responsible that each of these events happens 100%? The buck stops there with them or... Well, I think that they would be the, maybe this might be different than your question, but the BBAAA would be the, you know, fiscal entity that would distribute these, you know, they, they would form these contracts with these funds. So there's, there's no question, but I think you're saying like, you know, we already have a Juneteenth celebration on the common that is that, that, you know, Jen Moyston in the town, you know, funds, um, so, but, but I, and I actually don't know if, if BBAAA has contributed funds to that in the past, um, nor Kwanzaa. It's a fair question, but I, I think it, it's, it's just taking it on the, on the face of it, you know, we've got one fiscal agent, they're a nonprofit, you know, and, and that, that sort of satisfies the, the control of the money aspect of it, which is not exactly what you're asking, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, just from the the point of view of like getting to the end final report, for instance, will this group have the information to give an end final report for all of this stuff? You know, will they have all that information? I, I think they will. Um, yeah, I, I think so. If I mean, if, if they give the money from us, nobody else yeah. but them can, you know. It... Any other comments? We're at time. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I figured I, we're going to have to come back to this one. I marked it at time timed out. You know. Um, okay, I know that we are tight on time, and I think uh, we're going to about lose two of you very soon. Uh, so our next one uh, is the Worcester uh, Ecotarium Field Trip and Blessed Sacrament School is applying for it uh, for May sixteenth, twenty twenty four. They're asking for. Uh, $1,850 uh, and, and of their $1,850 budget for second, uh, first and second grade to go to Worcester uh, Ecotarium for a field trip and uh, to learn about animals. And um, I am going to say, I don't believe that this meets our, our funding criteria at all. It, it yeah. Um, it's not in Amherst. They've made no case for how this has anything to, to do with, with Amherst. And we, um, and they're not coming to Amherst, they're going to Worcester. So I'm not quite sure why they applied. Um, is there anyone who uh, believes this does meet our criteria in any way? No, I do not. I was also curious, like if it had been an Amherst field trip, would we fund that? Like if it was we do with the public school, but as a as a Catholic school kid myself, you know, this sounds like a parochial school to me, which leaves it as not really being accessible to the public in the same way. Yeah, as that, exactly. School. Yeah. Um, like, I'm also I also was con not that this is even relevant if we're saying no to it, but I was confused about like the cost of participation also and about a lot of it. I think it just doesn't meet our criteria. My guess is, you know, if we really wanted to to do the research, they probably applied to a lot of different councils hoping to just get some money, but um, right. it does not, not meet our guidelines. All right. Where are we with time? Can we get, do the next? Yeah. Um, five more minutes? Okay. So 
The next is the Center for Human Development applying for an all-in end of year recital. Uh, it's a dance performance for uh, June 15th, uh, and it's at the uh, Bromery Center at UMass. They are asking for $3,000 of their $3,000 budget. Um, and it is CHD's all-in barrier-free recreation program. Uh, they provide activity, recreational activities for uh, adults and children with disabilities. And this recital would be performed by uh, the all-in dancers for the general public and the dancers' families. And um, they show the statistics show that one in four adults um, live with disability in America, yet few organizations provide accommodating forms of recreation that fit their needs. Um, the all-in solution um, is so that is something that many have been looking for, and it provides access to year-round programs like dance and rock climbing, as well as seasonal activities, swimming, sled hockey, um, to tailored to fit the participants' needs. Um, since we are close on time, I'd say that it's a large ask, but I would like to champion fully funding it, if at all possible. Is there any, any comments? I got, yep, 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 Matt, I've got a pensive look on your face oh no i just reading the grant i'm sorry just trying to, so is it is the client are the clients part of the dance troupe i'm assuming so i'm just looking for the for something yeah that yeah okay yeah. well then I'm so, but they, they they <laughs> participate in this all year round and then this is and you know we know it's it's uh yeah they deserve you know to have a wonderful space like a performance space at umass like any other group and to perform for their families and uh, I, I think it's I think it's great. It's fantastic, and like to fully fund that. All right, I think we have two folks out the door, or no? Yes, or I mean maybe I can stay for part, but that would probably be more disruptive to leave in the middle of one. <laughs> um, so I do. I will. I will go now. But thank well, you. I, unless unless we can get through the the Charlemagne. Yeah, Oops. the next one is. Um, I'll start the timer now for the next one. Okay, oh, Charlemont yeah. is Charlemont next, or am I lost? Yeah, Charlemont's next. Okay, so do we still have Eleanor? Okay, Charlemont Foundation is asking for three hundred dollars of their one thousand nine hundred dollar budget. They are up in Charlemont. It's for their summer speak speakers series of twenty twenty four. I don't know if they list how many years they have done this, um, but they uh, host uh, these. Um, seminars uh, where the public attend and can discuss all a whole range of topics and folks from Amherst do go up there and participate. Um, and we've uh, been funding them. They're not in Amherst, but I think it's it's a pretty exceptional series of topics that they cover. So uh, I would I would say to fully fund this if at all possible. Is there anyone who does not support fully funding it or wants to discuss? Matt, you look like you have something. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I always support it. I feel bad because I this this is literally the kind of thing that I would always go to. But Charlemont just feels like a little bit too much of a hike, and I've never actually made it in three plus years. So I'll just I'll throw that out there. I don't, you know, I but I I assume that some folks from Amherst do get up there. They bring in amazing caliber speakers, and you know, I think the content's great. But I I wouldn't be, you know, if if we had to partially fund it, I, that's that would be acceptable to me. It's a small ask, but still. Yeah. Well, it might come down to that. Exactly. Okay. I believe that is all that we have have time for since it is 619. And you guys need to get where you're going on time. So I appreciate everyone. Please email me about, you know, between the, what did I say, the 11th and the 18th. And if people pepper me with emails, I eventually will get back to you. It's just a little hectic here with stuff. And I assume you'd want us to be looking at Tuesdays and Thursdays or any day of the week. Well, Christy can't do Tuesday. Oh, so right. looking at the, the, the goal is really to try to find a, a time at which we can all finalize this. It's the one session where we really do want everyone to have their vote counted. Um, so okay. it, it's do a we tough what to date it? What dates? Between when between and December when? 11th and the 18th. Actually, I'm not looking at what what our final. Can, I'm done teaching by the 11th. Well, that's all very good. Wait um, a minute. Let me just double check. Let me double check. We we have a date right now already yes. for the 14th. Do we not? 
that's we did, that's but on the doodle schedule. poll, there really there were several people who were conflicted and really couldn't come. So I haven't finalized that last one. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. So so sorry, put Tuesday back in the mix because I'm done teaching. By Excellent. Then. Okay. So, so Tuesdays, um, yes. Tell me all about Tuesdays, Eleanor and Sylvie. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I will okay. look I Great. will I will look at my planner tonight. Excellent. Well, have a wonderful evening and thank you everyone. It was uh good discussions. Appreciate it. Thank you so all right. Much. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you everybody. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Julianne, quick question. When you said the vote, everyone voting. Um, Just one second. I need to stop recording oh, okay. it because we don't oh, have a